So today we're taking a look at the Fletcher in Ranked. Um, full disclosure, I intended for this to be a one take style. I want to start that series up, one take style videos in Ranked. I think there's some interesting scenarios there, a lot of things that I can show you guys on how to play some of these ships. Fletcher being a very vanilla destroyer, but destroyers being very, very strong in Ranked. Very good for winning the game. And I think the one take style lends itself well to the varied situations you're going to encounter in Ranked, no two games are ever going to be the same, and it's important to adapt to those. Unfortunately, my mic just didn't record while I was playing these games. I was talking and explaining what I was doing, the thought process, and then it just didn't record. So we're going to get a post commentary today. First game, we do want to be looking at the scoreboard all the time at the very beginning of the match. Do they have radar? How strong are their DDs? Can I deal with them myself? Who do I have for support? Uh, Gronigan has a Hydra we gotta be aware of. No real radar to be worried about. Kitakazi's a pretty terrifying gunboat. And uh, Benson, I think we can beat in a fight. I'm going to this flank because I spawned on this side. It's very important to always have destroyers around where they spawn. You don't really want to overload one side of the map or the other most of the time. The extra spotting you're gonna get is very important. I was pointing towards this island a little bit earlier because I never want to go in front of islands like this. I don't know if I'm ever going to get spotted in front of that island, and in this case I would have, and I would have been pinched. I would not have been able to maneuver, and that's a really great way to lose a lot of health and possibly die. In this case though, our flank is going to be paying off thanks to our Loyang spotting uh, with his Hydro, and then we're going to be able to do a lot of damage to this Kitakazi. These DD engagements are the bread and butter of rank. You have to win these DD engagements if you want to win games. It's just that simple. The extra spotting, cap control, and map control you gain from winning these engagements is basically the entire fight. It's not always, but pretty much the entire fight is dedicated to this. So having a Fletcher, it's okay as a gunboat. It's been a little bit power crept, but the idea behind running a Fletcher here, of course, is that everyone can get access to it pretty easily. Most people probably have it. And I think it's a great example of a not gimmick heavy or focused ship that can win a lot of rank games. Um, in this case, we're seeing a little bit of the issues with the poor shell velocity, but we get the Kitakazi, our Lo Yang gets the crown again, and that means this game is um, pretty much over. Um, we're gonna skip ahead a little bit here to pretty late in the game, and it's a 2v2. Uh, not quite over then, is it? But what I really want to showcase here at the end of this one is just how blind the battleships are in this scenario. They kind of have to sit in the A-cap here. Um, they can't just allow us to gain control of the A-cap. And our Lo Yang here, botting these guys. I'm trying to flank. It's always important to look for those crossfires. It's not just a battleship thing. Destroyers with torpedoes, very, very strong as well. So we're trying to deal with the Minnesota with our torps a little bit. I was worried or thinking he might push in a little more. He chose to run towards spawn. This gives me an opportunity to flank around and actually get a kill on the Z-10 here. Destroyers can just kind of pop up like this. This Z-10 doesn't really know we're here exactly. His guns aren't pointing towards us. We do get ourselves a kill. Minnesota probably is going to shoot at us here. So we're going to use our smoke to disappear, hopefully, and stay bow in as much as possible, making it as difficult as possible for this Minnesota to land a lot of damage into us. And even though the Minnesota is still spotted, we're not going to get greedy and farm out of this smoke. We're just using it to disengage, and now we're going to run. Points advantage is ours. The Minnesota really has no chance of winning this game yet. And we launched some torps, ran away a little bit, and then we're going to win this game. And so I really want to point out both that winning that DD engagement is why we won this game so well, and that even when games kind of take a turn for the worse in the late game, having DDs alive versus an enemy team that doesn't is still more often than not going to win you the game. In this case, I'm opening up here on the end because our Lo Yang decided to open up. Distracted the Minnesota, which landed a lot of torps from the Lo Yang, which was very well done. And then I can get some free damage. It's important to play off of your teammates. You always want to be aware of um, where your teammates are at, how much support they're going to give you in that. And I think this next game is going to be a pretty good example. Our team is a little slow at getting out of spawn. We're not going to have the most support here. Important to note on the team list on the enemy side, Potentially Edinburgh with radar, that's about it. And we're the only destroyer in this one. It's very, very important that we stay alive. 
Sure, we want to win the DD engagement, but more important than winning the DD engagement is staying alive till the late game. We apply so much spotting and map control that we just can't die early. So what we're going to do here is very common thing to do is we're going to reverse into the cap. We're not going to full send into this island or any of the islands here that can give us some cover. I don't really know how much support I'm going to get here. So it's important that we don't overcommit. But we do want to stall out this cap. And we do want to do a little bit of spotting through these gaps here. We uh, managed to get our torps away, which is pretty nice. Um, and then we're just going to reverse in. And sometimes this is all you really need to do as a DD. Play it safe, contest the cap, wait for the game to develop, apply some spotting, and then maybe rotate away. That's all I'm going to do here. I'm looking to see how the enemy team deploys, how our team deploys. Are Georgia going on the flank? can be a good thing. It's going to get the uh, home cap relatively quickly for us. And uh, our Cleveland going over there, bit of an issue. Uh, <laughs> it'd be nice to have the radar here. But since he's not here, we do have to be a little careful. There's a smoke screen creeping up on us. So it's time to leave. I literally sat there for a few minutes, just not really doing much, watching to see how the game would develop. We know there's an Alsace flanking on the enemy side there. Although we do spot him again, so not terribly fast flanking. And there we see some torpedoes. So we know the ZF-6 is around. I'm going to wait here to see if I can get a little bit of shot damage in if he's coming out this way. Dump some torps even. I'm just trying to do a little bit of chip damage that might help me win that DD engagement a little later. We don't want to fully commit because there's an Edinburgh right there. <laughs> and our team isn't in great spots to support us here. The Neptune is kind of left to go help the Ruprecht push. And uh, our friendly Ruprecht here is... Sitting broadside and kind of behind the island, not really able to support us all that much. So it's time to rotate. It's okay to give up the cap here. We don't need the cap all the time. It's more important that we survive this engagement here and try and line up a good amount of damage in on that enemy destroyer. We know he's around that middle island that we were uh, up against earlier and our team actually ends up spotting him. Our rotation here is pretty much perfect. This is going to allow us to do some good damage into our ZF-6 opponent. Unfortunately, the Ruprecht... <laughs> yeah, he's sitting broadside. Um, you can't control your teammates. All you can do is control yourself. Uh, so we have played pretty well here, I think. Managing to survive this early push by the enemy team, the lack of support from our team. We haven't lost HP for it. We do manage to get some good damage in on this ZF-6. Obviously surprising him. He, wasn't had, he didn't have his turrets turned for us. The other thing we're doing is smoking up here. We know the Neptune or the Ruprecht are the ones spotting the CF6 since he shot. That allows us to go dark, not taking any damage from that Eden or even the ZF6. And then the ZF6 goes down. So this is great. I mean, we've traded one ship for one, but this is a really good spot to be in. What we have here is our team actually pretty much gonna gain control of C. And uh, the Eden is in a really tough spot here. Ruprecht charging him down. Um, the Neptune, I think, probably could have done a little better supporting um, and killing this Eden, But he decided to YOLO the Alsace, and it actually worked out. So we're feeling pretty good here. Uh, this Eden is in trouble, and uh, hopefully we managed to take him out. And then we're going to just have a ton of map control. Unfortunately for us, our Ruprecht manages to eat a lot of those torpedoes, and now we're stuck in a really bad spot. Other things to notice on the other flank... Uh, the Georgia has decided to just YOLO into two and a half, three ships, depending on how you count the rune support from the other side. As well as, yeah, the Cleveland running into Ruprecht secondaries. You can't control your teammates, guys. <laughs> you just can't. And that's the unfortunate side about ranked sometimes. You can't always play for saving your star. Our Georgia predictably dies thanks to his YOLO push. He did well at the beginning, actually uh, getting these home cap. But he way overcommitted. Unfortunately, that does lead to a loss for us. And that's okay. We are nowhere near top score here. And that's fine. We need to be playing for wins. That's the idea here behind playing the Fletcher here and just showing you how I want to approach these DD games. We lose a star here. It's not a big deal. If we're playing to save a star, we're playing differently than we are to win the game. And the goal is to win the game, not to save our star. So... Overall, I think you're going to have a much better time in ranked and rank up more if your focus is on winning, playing for your team, playing your ship well to win the game, not to save your star. But I don't really see that changing a lot of people. People tend to play to save their star, and that's fine. But uh, 
Ideally, we do want to be winning games. Here, we're gonna approach the contest cap. This is very important to know in DDs. If you're the only DD on your team, you kinda just have to go to the contest cap, all right? You need that extra spotting and cap control to go to this very important A cap. If we don't, well, the enemy team gets it for free. Let's say we're pushing the enemy's home cap. Well, they get A cap, and then they just crossfire us into oblivion as we push up to the home cap. Not really gonna work out all that well. Here, I decide to smoke up because the enemy Nebraska is going to come spot us. This I will use to deal with hybrid and planes. Um, notice they don't have radar on their team. Something I was looking at earlier on in the match, you always want to look at what the enemy team has. Do they have a radar? ZF Z46 has a hydro potentially that we got to be a little bit spooky of. Um, but to deal with a hybrid ship or planes in a DD, you want to be playing near your teammates so their AA can help you out or you use your smoke to go dark before the plane spot you. And uh, reversing out of this smoke, trying to get into the cap, does get us spotted briefly by Hydro, but our timing was pretty good here in that uh, the Z46 was kind of pushed back. And we didn't actually take too much damage. Again, reversing into the cap is amazing for situations like this. If I had been bow in, I would have died. Straight up, guys, I literally would have died. Z46 would have smoked up in his and used his Hydro, I would have been charging into that and I would have had to turn out and I would have died because I would have been spotted by that Hydro in front of the entire enemy team. Reversing allowed me to take 2000 damage and live to fight another day. We get a radar on the Z46, get a little chip damage in there, it always helps. And now I'm going to apply a bit of pressure to this Duncan. We still don't want to fully commit here, but we do see that we have quite a bit of support here. The enemy support is dwindling. This Duncan managed to go broadside. And uh, in this one, well, the enemy battleship seems to be going broadside and taking a massive hit, unlike uh, last game, which felt pretty good. Again, you can't control your teammates. Uh, you're always going to have games that you're not going to win. Some you're going to win for free. But it's uh, up to you to do the little things to try and help win those uh, games that are up in the air. And again, we're going to reverse in. Even though the support's all gone, the reason being... The Ruprecht is right behind us, or in front of our ship, I guess. But the idea is, the Z46 is probably torping that Ruprecht. He's broadside on, going through a channel, it's very, very common. We don't want to eat those torpedoes. And I stay in my smoke just a little longer so that I don't get spotted by that Nebraska plane. But we don't want to be broadside on to torpedoes. We always need to be thinking, where's the enemy DD at, and where might they be torping from? In this case, the Ruprecht, and uh, there we go. Here comes the torpedoes. Probably avoid those anyway if I'm turning around earlier, but uh, it's always important to keep that in mind. The Z46 even opens up on us, so we know where he's at. He doesn't have a lot of support, so I want to choose whether to stay here or rush around this corner to the right. Um, we're going to stay here. Looks like the Z46 is trying to turn around, and I want to get some damage in on him. Very, very important thing to do is not spend time torping when you could spend time applying damage with your guns to the enemy destroyer. Our torps come up here, so DD's not spotted yet. Let's torp. But the instant he's spotted, I'm not going to waste any more time trying to torp. It's really not worth it. I see this all the time in DD engagements, someone trying to torp the other destroyer, and most of the time, that is not worth it. And it's such a small percentage of the time that torping might be worth it, that it's pretty much a rule to just use your guns in a gunfight. It's it's almost never worth it. Um, so there we go. We managed to win that DD engagement. We went to the contest cap. We're going to win this game. Just before we end here, a note on smoking up and farming. Because it's a great way to apply damage and help your team win. Don't smoke up in between your friendly ship that's going to be doing the spotting and the enemy ship you want to be shooting at. If I had smoked up at the beginning of this uh, end final clip here, I would have totally cut off any spotting that this Ruprecht would have been able to do on this hipper. So always be looking for who is spotting, can you get away with smoking up, or should you just be staying dark, continuing to spot, and then maneuvering around the map trying to get a better position to deal with the enemy team. This one does end in a victory for us, which is pretty nice, but the key here is we're playing for the win, we're playing for those caps, we're not going for all-out damage, trying to save our star in that. We're trying to win the game. And again, pretty low on the scoreboard. And yet we did the important thing that the destroyer role needs to do in this case. And we got a win.
As for the build here on Fletcher, of course, we're going to be going with a gun build. I think that's really the best way to win engagements in ranked. It's so important that you're not falling behind on that DPM. And because of that, we're still taking some torp upgrades. I didn't really feel the need for superintendent in this case, so we'll take some fill the tubes. But the idea behind the build would be to go for main battery and AA specialist and adrenaline rush way before uh, fill the tubes. Concealment is necessary, so is survivability expert. We want to stay alive, we want to be stealthy as possible. Testing those caps, last stand of course, always taken. And even preventive maintenance, we're trying to keep our guns in the fight as long as we can, our engine, all that stuff. We need to be dodging, we need to be applying damage, and uh, trying to survive those early engagements. Late game, destroyers are so, so powerful. We just need to survive that early engagement time, and hopefully outplay the enemy destroyer. And you're going to win a lot of games that way. Here are the upgrades. We should talk about signals real quick. Um, even if you don't use signals in random battles, I think if you're trying to win games in ranked, at least at least have a debt flag on. If anything else, just run that. Um, it's going to be a pretty painful way to lose <laughs> lose ranks to uh, detonations. Uh, but there we go. There's Fletcher. Uh, unfortunately, a post commentary. I wanted it to be live. I think it's uh, going to be fun to do this series. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, maybe we'll take a look at Fletcher again. But I really wanted to start off with a very vanilla basic DD. Not looking at anything with crazy gimmicks that are making it very, very strong. The basics of Destroyer play is all the same. And if you can run a Fletcher, you're going to do well in a lot of other Destroyers too. And at least this one is pretty easy to get, and I think a lot of people do have it as well. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, look forward to the actual live versions of this. We're going to take a look at all other DDs, as well as cruisers and battleships. How to play them in ranked to win, not just uh, try and save your star. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.